our lives are full of chaos. We don't know what the next pandemic is going to hit or if we will lose our job tomorrow. We all hate it. We want to plan our future, to control our fate. But what if I told you that chaos could also be a driving force? Today I'm about to tell you how I turned chaos into my secret weapon, my profession, and my best friend. I was always labeled the fat kid in class. In fact, I was so fat, nothing fit me in the kids department, and I used to get my 20-year-old cousin second-hand clothes. Being fat is not easy, especially during recess, when the bullies would beat me up and the girls would laugh at me, or even worse, take pity on me. I absolutely hated school, and I didn't really know why it was important. I didn't have any adult figure back then to explain to me its importance. My parents are amazing people, but they grew up in refugee camps with no formal education. As a fat kid, I realized that the only way to survive was to fight back. Obviously, I was afraid, but it was the only defense mechanism I had. So I started beating up kids that were younger and weaker than me, until I gained the name for myself as someone not to mess with. Even in the world of bullies, there were two clear rules in our neighborhood. The first, don't punch in the face. The second, there are no other rules. From the moment I became a bully, life at school definitely got easier. I also gained more confidence in the classroom. I became addicted to the adrenaline rush every time the teachers yelled at me, which made the kids in my class laugh all the time. One day I was sitting in the back of the classroom, like every day, when the teacher banged her fist on my table for the millionth time. I could see her angry eyes. Maury was disturbing the class again. Go to the principal's office. I went out to the sound of the students' laughter, but this time I could hear the teacher walking behind me. She grabbed my face with her hand, holding tightly onto my cheeks, but this time she didn't shout. She whispered with the softest, almost motherly voice, I promise you, Maor, and remember what I'm about to tell you right now, you will never make anything of yourself. My heart was pounding and I didn't know what to do with all this rage and fear, but I knew that the answer lay with one man the wisest man I knew, my father. I barely saw him as a child. He would leave for work before I woke up and come back home after I'd fallen asleep. But this time, the rage inside me didn't let me go to sleep. So I decided to stay awake until he would come back home. Suddenly, I woke up in the living room to the sound of the front door opening. And there he was, my father like I've never seen him before, exhausted beyond belief. I've never seen my father cry until now. He looked at me, walked towards me, and put his hands on my shoulders. The words that he told me that night have never left me. In fact, they still echo in my head every time that I walk in the corridors of MIT, Harvard, or the Israeli Defense Forces. He told me, study, son, study, so you won't end up like me. At that moment, something in me shifted. At the first time in my life, I had a clear vision of what I would like to accomplish in the future. I've never cared about my studies, but now I did. I realized that if I would study harder, my father would be happy, and I would be able to see him more. So I started to study like my life depended on it, even though every cell in my body screamed I can't. Only a decade later, I realized that those screaming cells had a name, ADHD. Even though I started to do better in school, I felt as if there was a ticking time bomb of chaos that lived inside of me, and it's only a matter of time before it would explode. One day at school, I got smacked on the shoulder. I turned around and saw Dan, a kid from my class. The next thing I remember, Dan was lying on the sidewalk, and his whole face was full of blood. I realized that the ticking time bomb of chaos inside me had erupted again, and I broke my neighborhood's only sacred rule no punching in the face. I ran home in a panic and locked myself in the house. My little brother and sister were playing in the living room and I prayed to God that everything is gonna be okay. After a few minutes, I heard this loud knocks on the door. It definitely wasn't my parents. They wouldn't be back for hours. I looked through the people and my heart began to beat like crazy. Three armed police officers. They yelled at me to open the door. I realized that I had no choice. I looked at my brother and sister and smiled to them and wordlessly told them that everything is going to be okay. And I opened the door. 
the building where we lived at the time had a communal parking lot where all the neighbors could see everything that was going on. When the policeman put me in the car, I felt as if all their eyes are on me and I was burning inside with shame. In the police station, the officer described in detail how she plans not only to file a police report on me, but to destroy my entire future. She'd heard everything about me from my teachers and my principal, and I begged her for hours to give me one last chance. After three hours or so, she came back with a piece of paper in her hand and put it on the table in front of me. Get out of here, was all she told me. I looked at the paper and saw this was my last report card, and I realized that my good grades saved the day. When I left the police station, the one man waiting for me was my father. <laughs> my father is not a man of many words, but he didn't need any words this time. The way that he looked at me and hugged me said it all. In those few hours in the police station, I've learned the most important lesson of all. The lesson that I've never learned at MIT, Harvard, or the Technion. I got a small glimpse into the future of a person that I never wanted to be. I realized that if I wouldn't take control of minor chaos, it would control me. After those few hours in the police station, I made two major decisions that changed the course of my life ever since. The first was to become a doctor. Frankly, I didn't really know what it meant to be a doctor, but I realized that if you study really, really hard, you become one. Only seven years after this day in the police station, I was the youngest PhD graduate at the Technion, Israel's Institute of Technology. At the day that I received my master's degree, my entire family came to witness the ceremony. The thing that I remembered the most was the smell of my mother's cooking filling the car, chaim kube, all traditional Jewish Iraqi food that my mother prepared for the event. On our ride there, I approached my father with an unusual request. I asked him if he would honor me by accepting my degree on my behalf. When the name Aur Farid was called, there he was. <laughs> In cap and gown, walking proudly on the street. <laughs> After all I've been putting him through, I believe that this moment of glory truly belongs to him. The second decision I've made back in the police station was to do everything in my power to make sure that other teenagers don't go through what I went through, to teach them how to control their inner chaos before it controls them. Therefore, I established the Learn to Succeed program, the first program of excellence for youth from lower socioeconomic backgrounds that enrolls more than 5,000 Jewish and Arab youth from the entire country. We teach them how to find their deepest dream, how to make a plan and turn it into reality, step by step, side by side. So, what did I choose to study? Well, my entire life I was trying to control my inner chaos, so quite unsurprisingly, for my PhD thesis, I chose to explore chaos and how to control it. The scientific field called chaos theory is actually the field that studies all phenomena that cannot be predicted. Even with the most sophisticated microscopes and computers, we will never be able to predict it, such as the spread of epidemics, climate change, global economy, and even human behavior. It's the messiest branch of science, the most disorganized, the most problematic, even violent. In the study of chaos, we don't try to make order in the world or prevent chaos. We try to understand it better, prepare for it, and deal with it when it arrives. From a PhD thesis, I chose to explore the response of nuclear reactors to earthquakes. Chaos within chaos, you might say. In our lab at the Tekken, we developed a technology called chaotic energy sinks. Devices that are mounted on sensitive structures, such as nuclear reactors, and protecting them from environmental chaos, such as earthquakes. When chaos attacks the system, the chaotic energy sink goes into action, raging chaotically, and by that cancelling the chaos in the sensitive structure and saving it from collapse. We do not try to prevent chaos. We absolutely can't. We create our own chaos to cancel the 
inevitable chaos and defeat it. And this is how we harness the power of chaos for saving the lives of millions of people around the world. After studying chaos theory for over 10 years now, these are the main lessons that I've learned. The first is to plan with no fear. The world around us is full of chaos and always will be. A jungle of uncertainty that we will never be able to predict or beat. Don't be afraid of the unexpected. Make a plan, but don't fall in love with it. Maybe something better is already planned for you. The second, target bad chaos into positive goals. You lost your job today? Congratulations, start a startup that you always dreamed of. Chaos forces us to leave our comfort zone and do things that we never dared to do. Think of it as the friend that makes the hard decisions for you and pushes you towards your next greater challenge. The third, choose to be positive. You missed the bus today? Mazel tov. Maybe you'll meet the love for life today at the bus station. Look, it doesn't matter what chaos you are dealing with in your own personal life, at home, at work, in your relationships, and it doesn't matter where you came from. Chaos can go both ways. Even successes and good things can be unexpected. The chaos inside me has never left me. But today, I no longer want it to go away. I learned to embrace it and even to love it. And I invite you to do the same. Let chaos make its mess and let it take you exactly where you didn't plan to go. Thank you.